Welcome to Data Science 1, Probability, Bayes' Theorem. Okay, we have all of these rules that we've been accumulating along the way about an event, the sample space, the probability of sample space equals one, unions intersection, probability that behaves like area, we have a conditional probability, and we have this idea of independence. Okay, well now we want to break this up into something that's a little different. So suppose we have a partition of a sample space. So we take our sample space and we have a whole bunch of events in it. And the key is, is that none of the events overlap each other. Okay, so they share nothing in common. And if I take all of the events and put them together, I get the entire sample space. Okay, so that's key here. So if I put all the events together and put them in a big union, I'm going to get the sample space back. All right, suppose we have A1 through AK form a partition of S and B in is an event. So this shaded in blue area here is an event. Well, I can find the probability of B just by looking at where B intersects this set, where B intersects this set, this set, this set, this set, this set, and then just add them all together. Okay, so it's pretty easy to do. It's a pretty easy idea here. So if I just have this idea, then I would just add up each of the probabilities of each of the intersections. Uh, and this can be rewritten using this rule that we played with last time. And if we keep going with it, we can get this rule. So it look, it's essentially the same as this rule, but you'll see why we have it in this format later. Okay, And this is called the law of total probability. So and one of the big ideas here is, is look, if we have a... A partition then we can find and we can find the intersections with events then we can find the total probability of that event okay so suppose our market has three suppliers for mango supplier a supplier B supplier C based on previous experience we know that point the probability of a is 0.2 the probability of B is 0.5 and the probability of C is 0.3 now notice this forms a partition okay because it says we have three suppliers and notice that the probabilities add up to one. Furthermore, from experience, we know that rotten mangoes always happen, but we notice that supplier A has about 3% rotten, supplier B has about 4% rotten, and supplier C has about 2% rotten. What is the probability that a customer picks up a rotten mango? Now notice it came from different places and uh, different percentages are rotten depending on where it came from. So what do we know? We know that the probability that the mango came from supplier A is 0.2. The probability the mango came from supplier B is 0.5. The probability the mango came from supplier C is 0.3. The probability it's rotten given it came from A is 0.03. The probability it's rotten given it came from supplier B is 0.04. The probability it's rotten given it came from supplier C is 0.02. Now, we put this together here using our formula. So the probability that it's rotten. So they're just going to pick up a rotten one. They don't care who it came from because that's your business, not theirs. Okay, so the probability it's rotten given A times the probability of A. The probability it's rotten given it came from B times the probability it came from B. The probability it's rotten given C given that it came from C. And then if we put all this together, we get 0 0.032. Okay, so... This is a lot of computation, uh, but it's not really difficult to do once you've written down what you know. All right, so here's Bayes' theorem, and it uses this law of total probability, and that's why we did that first. Okay, and what it allows us to do is essentially flip the probability statement. So notice if I have the probability of AJ given B, well, that's the probability of AJ intersect B over the probability of B. This is the probability of A, J, intersect B over the probability of the sum of the probability that B given AI times the probability of B given AI, or B probability of AI. And if you notice that this statement here is the flip of this statement here. So it gives us a way to flip these over. And what it does is it just re-updates our information. And that's essentially what Bayes' theorem does. It updates our information again. Just like I said, conditional probability does, and notice it's a conditional probability. Suppose that we know the probability of a specific disease in the general population is 0 0.01. 
Furthermore, we have a test that reads positive 0.99% of the time for people who have the disease, and the test reads positive 10% of the time for people who don't have the disease. If I'm a physician, I want to know what is the probability somebody has the disease given they read the positive test, which is not what this tells us. This says if they have it, then it reads positive. I know it read positive. I want to know if they have it. So write down what we know. We know the probability of D, the disease, is 0 0.01. The probability that the test covers up positive given the person has the disease is equal to 0 0.99. The probability of positive given not having the disease is 0 0.10. So if I put this together with, I need one other piece here, the probability of D complement, and I get 1 minus the probability of D, which is 1 minus the probability of 0 0.01, which is 0.99. We want the probability of D given plus, and that's not what we have here. Okay, so uh, here's the information that I had above. I put it in to base formula, the probability of plus. D given plus is the probability of plus given D times the probability of D over the probability of plus given D times the probability of D plus the probability of plus given D complement times the probability of D complement. Put it all together and you end up with 0 0.05. Hmm, but it looks so good right if you looked up here like but it reads correct 99 percent of the time if you have that disease it's going to read correct 99 percent of the time and it only shows up positive only 10 percent of the time if you don't have the disease that somehow seems like it should be good but the probabilities are don't come out to what you would think they would because this is such a rare disease okay so here's a quick summary. The law of total probability is given by this. Bayes' theorem is given by this. And these ideas show up again and again and again and again in probability statistics and data science. Uh, and actually, Bayes' theorem shows up in a bunch of methods that are called Bayesian methods. So if you uh, are interested in Bayesian methods, these are this formula here, Bayes' theorem, is the key to doing that. All right, well, we'll talk about that later, and we'll see you in the next video.